Now I'm going to attempt to explain to you why the um, why the gradient vector why the gradient vector is always at 90 degrees to the tangent. So the gradient vector looks something like this. So this is your gradient vector. Why is it that it's always at 90 degrees to the tangent? Uh, suppose the particle suppose the particle is instead of here it's here. So your gradient vector your gradient vector will look something like this and uh, the tangent will look something like this and it's always at 90 degrees it's always at 90 degrees so in this video I'm going to give you a, um, a working example and then maybe in the next video we're going to look at the, the, um, the algebra behind it so let's say you've got a, um, a surface governed by this so if you cut it at a height of 17 you're going to get a level curve looking like this so in, re remember, if, if you're an ant walking along this path, um, you're, if you're walking along this, this curve, you're not going to climb up in height. This is not going to increase. This will always be at zero. So if, if you're an ant walking on this surface, you, you're going to walk on this surface. You're, you're not going to gain in height. You're not going to go uphill. You're not going to go uphill or you're not going to go downhill. You're always going to be at the same level. You're always going to be at the same level elevation or the same height so just bear that in mind so this thing if you're walking along here this is not going to increase it's going to be zero anyway let's get this working in, in Desmos so um, so punch this into Desmos punch um, punch this surface uh, punch this level curve into um, into Desmos that will then give us this ellipse so so that will give us the ellipse but now we need to convert this ellipse into its parametric form so um so starting starting hang on starting at the ellipse starting at the ellipse uh divide everything by 17 that will then take us to here and uh remember 1 equals this squared plus this squared so notice that this is on par with this and this is on par with this so this is just a technique that we would use to convert um convert it into its um parametric form so if, if we just set this to be the same as this this is just a technique to convert to convert into its parametric form so uh, if we set this to be the same as this that will then give us this and then uh, make X the subject so um, so that will then take us to here and uh, that will then take us to here so now we've got our parametric form to um, to draw our ellipse so going back to um, to Desmos, punch this into Desmos going back to Desmos punch this into Desmos, that will then give us this thing here so our, our ellipse, our old ellipse is this in, in Cartesian form now we've got it in its parametric form so this is in, a, in its parametric form so going back to here we've, got, we've now got our ellipse in parametric form um, let's, uh, for, for any given point Let's say the remember the particle later is going to move around like this. So let's just assign assign uh, b, assign b as this, assign c as this. So this point here is at b comma c. So so jump to Desmos and assign b and c. So uh, this is just um, this is just to create a particle. So assign b, which is this thing here. Assign c which is this thing here and then add your particle uh, bracket b comma c that will then give us a particle hang on that will then give us a, th this, per uh, this purple particle here so if we slide a so you can see the particle moving around so we've got our particle now jump back to, um, to here so we've got our particle now we've got to work out our gradient vector so our gradient vector Hang on. So so uh, so to compute our gradient vector, to compute our gradient vector, start with our ellipse, partially differentiate this with um, with respect to x. That will then give us this. Partially differentiate this with respect to y. That will then give us this. So um, so uh, so evaluate it at our given point. We are currently at b comma c. So we would put we would put b into here and c into here so our gradient vector is given by this 
So what that means is, what this means here is this. Um, to be across, let's just imagine it as this, and then 4C up, 4C up. So this is our vector at the moment. This is our vector. We would need to, to join this to the end of BC. So jump to Desmos, jump back to Desmos. Uh, we've got our point. So, so to, to create a vector, you create a table within Desmos. Um, I think you, you go to here and then you add table there. Um, well, create your table. Uh, you start at the point BC and then you, you join B to uh, 2B. And because remember, we move 2B across and then, and then, uh, and then how many up? Hang on, let me think. Bear with me. And then 4C up. So, uh, so hang on, this should be 4C. 4C. So 4C up, and then, uh, and then, and then keep your finger on this bit here. Uh, that, that will give us our vector here. So as we move, so now we've got our, our, our gradient vector as it moves around. So remember, it's, it's B plus 2B, and then C plus 4C. Let me double check. Uh, 2B, and then, 4c yeah so now we've got our gradient vector we've got our gradient vector now we need to create our our so we've got our gradient vector now we need to create our tangent vector so uh, so currently the situation is this we've got our surface and um, and we've got one one parameter one variable with this one variable we can dictate how the particle should move we we well in, in our case it was uh, x equals uh, equals this thing here and y equals this thing here so so with one variable we can dictate how the particle should move that that's a beauty of using this parametric uh, equations technique we can dictate we can tell the particle to move in a straight line by using its parametric form or we can get it to move in a circle if if we wanted to but in our case we want the particle to move in an ellipse so um so with one variable we we will know the x location and the y location so now we're going to change the way we think we're going to we're going to think of it as in vector form because it, this is its position vector so as time ticks away we will always know the position vector we will always know the position vector we will always know the position vector so remember from our section on on uh, position vector if you if you um, differentiate the position vector then you're gonna get if you differentiate it you're gonna get its um, its its um, velocity vector if you like so if you differentiate this it will give you a new vector and then this new vector this new vector is always tangent to to the position vector so it's always so suppose suppose the particle is here if if you differentiate it it will give you this velocity vector well this velocity vector is always tangent to the position vector and we've seen why in some of the earlier videos a long time ago so if the particle is here you 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 know the uh, position vector if you differentiate the position vector it will give you a new vector and this new vector is always tangent to the position vector so now we've got our our, our velocity vector so we've got our velocity vector so jumping at jumping back to desmos punch that in to desmos so uh so punch it in that will then give us this thing here so this is our velocity vector so as you move as you slide a back and forth it's always at 90 degrees it's always at 90 degrees so look at this let me put it vertically upwards hang on let me zoom in um it's always at 90 degrees as as you move around it's always at 90 degrees anyway um i will can i will um give you a an algebraic explanation as why it's always at 90 degrees in the next video okay so play around with this